In January 1860, the death occurred of a doctor due to his use of chloroform. His death caused most painful excitement in Alloa on New Year's Day when it became known that Dr Alexander Rennick had died during the morning while under the influence of the chloroform. It appeared he'd been suffering from an ingrown toenail on his big toe and on the afternoon of Saturday 31st December 1859 had spoken to one of his professional colleagues, Dr John Duncanson, and asked him to come the following morning so that he could cut away the painful nail. Being an operation that was going to cause a lot of pain, he informed Dr Duncanson that it was his intention to take chloroform. As soon as he said this, Dr Duncanson suggested that another medically trained man should be called in to assist, but Rennick said no. He explained his brother-in-law, who was coming to Alloa from Edinburgh to spend the new year with him, would be present, and assured Duncanson that he would do quite as well. Chloroform had only been in use since the 1830s, although it was in 1842 that it was discovered it had anaesthetic qualities, which could make surgery easier. It was not until 1847 that Edinburgh obstetrician James Young Simpson tried it on humans for the first time when he experimented on friends. One of them fell into a deep sleep overnight and no adverse effects were noted when he regained consciousness the following morning. Simpson went on to use it in childbirth with the baby daughter of Jane Carstairs being the first to be delivered in this way. Nonetheless, the quantities had to be calculated accurately and Simpson was lucky not to have overdosed when he tried it out on himself. It was revolutionary and he went on to be knighted in 1866 for his work in obstetrics. Rennick had been trained in its use, but his dose proved fatal. On the Sunday morning, New Year's Day, Dr Duncanson arrived and found his friend in good spirits, but Rennick still insisted on taking the chloroform. Duncanson made no further objection, having administered it to him on a previous occasion without any adverse effects. Having expressed some thoughts as to how he wished the operation to be performed, and instructed by Rennick to be sure not to begin until he was suitably dozed up, a little of the chloroform was poured onto a towel, and he held it to his mouth with his own hands. After a short while, as he felt it was not taking the desired effect, he asked for some more, which Dr Duncanson at first refused to give. However, after a time, finding it was having no effect whatsoever, he applied a little more. Noting that Rennick was trying to quicken its effect by breathing it in deeply, Duncanson asked him to breathe normally, which he did. It still seemed to be having no impact. At Rennick's request, another small quantity of the chloroform was applied to the towel, and after a short time, it finally produced the desired effect. Duncanson checked his pulse. It seemed to be normal and regular, so carried out the operation, which took less than a couple of minutes to complete. The whole procedure went smoothly. Rennick remained under the influence of the anaesthetic, but his breathing was regular and everything seemed to be as it should be. However, it was taking longer than normal for him to come round. Some cold water was thrown onto his face to rouse him, but it failed to have the desired effect. So Dr Duncanson resorted to other measures. These two had no effect. After a few minutes, Rennick's breathing became less rhythmic and more laboured, 
and his face began to change. His pulse had become so weak it was barely registering, and this caused Dr Duncanson to feel duly alarmed. Artificial respiration, a modern method of resuscitation at the time, was tried, and he administered this for nearly half an hour in the hope that his friend would come round. But it was to no avail. Dr Rennick died shortly afterwards, aged 26. He had grown up in Musselburgh near Edinburgh and had come to Alloa around six years beforehand, where he practised. His professionalism, as well as his gentle manner, quickly resulted in him having a large practice. He was held in high esteem by all who knew him. Sixteen months before his death, he had been married to Jeanie, the eldest daughter of Robert Knox, the local brewer at Cambus. The passing of Rennick, which was not only felt in Alloa but in the wider area, was referred to by all the ministers of the town during their afternoon services that New Year's Day. The Reverend Peter McDowell of Moncrief United Free Church, where Rennick was a member, made his death the subject of some solemn but notable remarks on his kindness towards not only his patients but to everyone he met. A while before his death, Rennick had been troubled with severe pain in his chest, which caused him some concern, as he thought his heart was failing, and it was known his father had died suddenly of heart disease. It was not until 1911 it was proved chloroform could cause arterial fibrillation, also known as arrhythmia, an irregular heartbeat, so Rennick may indeed have had an underlying heart condition. Rennick was not the only physician to die from overdosing on chloroform. 